Hello and welcome to Friday Live. I am your host, Amanda Farmer, and we are heading out to the Your Strata Property Facebook page and also out to LinkedIn. Happy Friday, everybody. The end of another busy week in Strata, and it gets no less busy as we speed towards the end of the year. I know since lockdown has lifted, our Strata managers in particular are very, very busy getting contractors back to site, getting projects completed. In my world, I have clients that are trying to comply with tribunal orders or have the their opponents comply with tribunal orders to get work completed, work that has been put on hold for some time as we have been locked down. So there's lots and lots going on. And many of you already coming on in bright and early to join me for Friday Live. It is always nice to see you and lovely for you to give me a hello. Let me me know that you're there. Petra is here saying good afternoon. How are you doing, Petra? Nice to see you. We have a little bit to cover, uh, unsurprisingly, today. A few things that I would love to share with you that I've had my head in for the last couple of weeks. We had a great podcast episode this week. I was chatting to Tim Fuller of Strata Guardian, episode number 287. I'm going to swing around with a little summary of that one for you today today. We have also seen, or I have certainly seen and bookmarked it to chat to you all about a report from the Community Associations Institute in the United States. And a really, really important uh, report arising from a very tragic circumstance from the middle of the year. I'm going to be sharing the insights of that report with you today and letting you know why I think it's so important that we understand the findings and the recommendations that are being made in the United States uh, through that report. I'll also share with you the name of our new New South Wales Property Services Commissioner that's been announced in the last week or so. And I'll come back around to our Women in Strata event. I have a feeling that by the time I get to let you know about that event, we might actually be sold out. We are almost 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 is the word, sold out for our end of year Women in Strata event. But I'm going to give you that link. We do run a wait list for our busy Strata managers who are keen to catch up with their colleagues and have a well-earned celebration for the end of another full on year. I'm seeing more hellos here in the comments. Hey, Anne, nice to see you. Emiliana is saying hi from Macquarie Uni. Great to have you here with us, Emiliana. And Henry is here. How you doing, Henry? Good to see you there. Excellent. If you're coming on in and you want to drop me a hello, I'd love to see you and say hi on this Friday afternoon. But first up, podcast episode number 287 this week, how to invest owners corporation funds. I was chatting to Tim Fuller of Strata Guardian and Tim came to my attention through a forum post. We have a members only Q&A forum and a number of you I know are busy bees in there and you're often bringing my attention to changes, practical issues in our Strata community, uh, quirks with the legislation. Sometimes you're questioning some of the things that I might be saying on the podcast, chats that Rena and I are having. And one of our members posted in the forum that they had listened to a chat that Rena and I had about the investment of owners corporation funds. And Rena had mentioned that a strata manager is only allowed to invest funds, trust funds, on behalf of an owners corporation, in particular, authorized deposit taking institutions, ADIs, we call them. And there is a published list of ADIs that benefit from a scheme, the financial claim scheme, so that if your trustee, your strata manager happens to do something naughty with your funds, you're going to be covered. Your trust funds are going to be covered and you don't suffer loss. Now, Rena and I chatted about that in one of our podcast episodes. 
It was then brought to my attention in our members forum that it is not necessarily the case that owners corporations are restricted to investing only in particular ADIs. They can expand their investment opportunities if they are not having that fund or that investment managed by their strata manager. Those legal requirements around the management of trust funds that bind our agents, our strata managing agents, uh, disappear if it is the owners corporation that is making the investment decision. Um, that is not to say that there aren't other requirements, and Tim mentions these in episode 287 of the podcast. The owners corporation is indeed still acting in that position as trustee of their owners' funds and needs to make sure that it is making smart decisions and not putting owners' funds at risk. And that's really what we got into in the podcast episode, all the ways that Tim and his company are helping owners' corporations, body corporates, strata companies right across Australia to get a better return on what I call your rainy day fund. We have some great buildings out there, communities who actually have, surprise, surprise, some funds set aside and planning to use those funds to deal with capital items that are coming up. Maybe some years down the track, we're not getting great uh, interest rates on term deposits at the moment. So the question is, is, of course, arising, how else can we be getting a good return on our funds um, rather than having them sit there and not do much for owners. So I have been really interested in hearing from buildings who are uh, following that kind of a path and being a bit more creative about their investment of their funds, the management of their funds. And indeed, I'd love to know if any of you uh, have had a listen to the podcast episode and are interested in chatting to Tim or someone like Tim about your options for getting a better return on your investment. Um, certainly spark some ideas for communities that I'm involved with. Uh, and I do think there are some great opportunities out there when you know the right stuff, know the right people and are aware of what is available to you. So I was really thrilled to be able to bring that chat to you this week. So many of you coming on in now and saying hello to me. Uh, I can see Nez there. Is that a hand up? Is that Nez saying hi? Or is that Nez saying I have a question? I'm not sure there. Good to see you, Nez. Colin is here saying all good here in New Zealand. Great to see you're out of lockdown. Our Sydney apartments are humming already. Yes, indeed. And Sydney is humming along already. We've had some crazy weather here in New South Wales. Um, it's certainly been wild and rainy where I am. And I think in Sydney City, it has been a bit wild as well. Uh, Patricia's here saying, hey, Amanda, looking good. You're my biggest fan, Patricia. Thank you. Always, always up for a compliment. Thank you very much. Uh, Peter is saying hi from Melbourne. Good to see you here, Peter. Uh, Chris Gray, hey, nice to see you from LinkedIn, saying this will be a great chat. All right, the standard has been set, Chris. Yes, it will be a great chat indeed. Michelle is in almost washed away orange. We had a month's rainfall overnight. Yes, I know how you feel, Michelle. We're getting a little bit of that where I am as well. Uh, Patricia saying heavy rain in French's forest. Yep, there you go. I'm right. It's right across New South Wales at the moment. Uh, Nez is this is the question you had, Nez, is it? Putting that hand up. We have had issues with our strata scheme with always exhausting funds and we've had to resort to special levies. Interesting, Nez. And I tell you what, what that tells me is there is a lack of proper planning going on there. And this is a great chat for you to be tuning into because I am definitely going to be talking about that coming up uh, pretty much right now, actually, as I look at this report from the Community Associations Institute, because that really is all about the importance of planning for future capital works, being on top of your repair and maintenance duties, and indeed the tragedy that can arise if those obligations are not met. Um, definitely having to resort to special levies for some communities, that just doesn't work. It's just not an option of choice. Uh, Tim and I definitely spoke about that in the podcast episode. I mentioned that there are certain communities, what I call our higher net wealth, perhaps, communities that are more comfortable funding 
uh, urgent special levies rather than having a large sum of money sitting in a capital works fund, not really doing much. Uh, but the bulk of us aren't necessarily in that position or comfortable with that position. And it may not be a very smart position to be in, uh, even if you are a savvy, uh, reasonably financially secure investor or owner, because it's not a great look for purchasers who are coming into buildings when your capital works fund is not looking so healthy and there is a scary special levy on the horizon or even perhaps a need to secure a strata loan. So yes, let's talk about that. Uh, Colin is saying big thing missed in the investment talk was the tax you pay on income. Thank you, Colin. Indeed, we did miss that one. I'm thinking about asking Tim if he would like to come onto a Friday Live and have a chat about this. And that is a great question that we can ask Tim on the spot. Why not? Can he please address these tax consequences? So let me flag Tim for a future Friday Live. Yes, tax is indeed going to be payable on the income before we get too excited about all that extra income we might be earning, investing our own as corporation funds. Let's make sure we understand the tax consequences. Uh, Patricia is asking, here's another question for Tim, is Strata Guardian listed as an approved financial institution? I haven't looked yet. Now, I'm not sure they are so much an institution, Patricia, but I believe they are financial advisors. Uh, and Tim says that in the podcast episode. So you're not so much investing in them, but they are managing the funds for you and making recommendations as to how you might invest. Uh, but definitely worth having Tim here to have a chat with us about the ins and outs of that system. Alrighty, and Bill and Ben is sharing with us that his Strata plan invested a spare 100000 in 2016 in an investment account, paying two-fifths of next to nothing in interest. If they'd bought Bitcoin, it would now be worth $10 million and people say crypto is risky. I'm really glad that you've mentioned this, Ben, because uh, Bill and Ben, because I uh, did see, I think it was on LinkedIn this week, that this discussion was also happening in Queensland. Uh, I think Chris Irons and Frank Higginson were running a webinar on the same topic, investing body corporate funds. And uh, not sure if it was a bit of clickbait, but they did say, can you invest in crypto? Uh, and I'm sure Bitcoin was raised on that webinar. So I'm not sure if anybody here tuned into that Queensland webinar with Chris Irons and Frank Higginson. If you did, let me know how it went. Uh, but I think that's exactly what they were talking about uh, and perhaps answering that question for their Queensland building. So I love that communities are thinking about this, getting smarter about managing their money. Um, so, so, so important. Uh, Petra's saying she's having some transmission problems and that I'm breaking up sometimes. I don't see that on my end, Petra. Rochelle might just jump in there uh, and see how we are going on the connection front. Uh, but indeed, I have said that this ability to manage, to properly forecast your needs, your financial needs for your communities are so, so important. And that really came to the fore for those of us right around the world when we saw in about June this year what happened in Miami. Now, the Community Associations Institute, the CAI, has now published the Condominium Safety Public Policy Report. The CAI is the counterpart, I say, the best way to explain it, to our Strata Community Association, our SCA. So they're uh, similar to our SCA and they are a group of uh, community association managers um, supporting communities throughout the United States. Now, following the tragic partial collapse of Champlain Tower South in Miami, Florida on June 24th, this year, the CAI convened task forces to explore changes to laws and best practices for the community association housing model that may help other communities to avoid this type of devastation and to provide solutions for legislators seeking to address building safety. And while not directed to what's going on in Australia, that's for sure, I certainly think the findings, the recommendations in this report can help Australian communities. And I really want us to be aware of what is in 
this report. Over a three-month period, more than 600 people participated in CAI's process through conversations, surveys, research, interviews, and identifying clear recommendations. Specialists uh, on funding, lawyers, insurance and risk management professionals, developers, engineers, architects, community association managers, and homeowner leaders all contributed to this research. And I have to say, this report has come out at remarkable speed. We're talking about a tragedy that occurred in June, and the report was published at the end of October after this extensive consultation. And the report provides some very specific public policy recommendations on these major topics. What the US uh, calls reserve studies and funding, that's what we would know as Capital Works Fund forecasts and our Capital Works uh, levies, and also building maintenance and structural integrity. So they're the topic items that the report looks at. And what I'm going to do is actually take you right on over to have a look at the report. I will just share this screen here with you, make sure I've got the right one. All righty. So that's not the front page. I'll show you the front page here of the Condominium Safety Public Policy Report. Now, some of you will be able to see this on your screen. I've tried to make it as big as possible. I know some of you are on phones, so do be assured that I am also going to talk through what we are looking at here. Uh, have a scroll down. Rochelle has the link also. That may help. Rochelle has the link that she can post in the comments section, and we will come back around to LinkedIn to post it there. So you can have a little look at it there in your own time. Uh, this report is dedicated to the memory of those those who lost their lives, those who lost loved ones, and those who lost their homes in the tragic collapse of Champlain Tower South in Surfside, Florida on June 24, 2021. Uh, I do believe the final death toll from this tragedy was 98 people. The uh, report starts with the executive summary, which is well worth having a look at there. And I'm just going to scroll down to this. Uh, these are the areas that I'm going to cover here today. The report gives some very specific recommendations on the topics of reserve studies and funding, building maintenance and structural integrity. So what I'm going to do is just skip down to page number 12, uh, where the CAI states its policy position. So what this report is doing is making recommendations to the relevant governments, both state and federal in the US, about what needs to change in the community associations legislation to prevent tragedy like this happening again. So the CAI would like to mandate reserve studies. Now, reserve studies are what we would know as Capital Works Fund forecast. So making that capital works fund plan, I should say, and then the forecast, which is the, the funding of the plan, making them mandatory is essential. And if you read through the report, what you're looking at here is the summary on the policy position. But in these prior pages, uh, they do go through the various states in the United States and set out the relevant legislation for each state and and advise whether or not the legislation in that state requires a mandatory capital works fund plan and mandatory funding of that plan. Uh, and it's quite clear that many states simply do not require these plans and do not require them to be funded. Um, importantly, it's pointed out that in Florida, associations, community associations may waive their need uh, to raise reserves, raise funds towards a capital works fund. Uh, and they just have to notify that they have waived that in their financial statement. So that is pretty scary stuff. If we're not planning and if we're not funding, then we are not properly repairing and maintaining our common property. The reason that I wanted to point this out to you is because in New South Wales, we actually have some similar legislation, perhaps uh, frighteningly for some, we do have a requirement 
to have a capital works fund plan. But what I'm going to just share with you now is this section of our legislation where this is set out, section 80, an owner's corporation is to prepare a 10-year capital works fund plan, tells us that we've got to do this plan for each 10-year period. The plan is to be prepared for the annual general meeting at which the period covered by the plan previous expires. We can review, revise, replace our 10-year plan. These are the types of things that the plan should include. And down the bottom here, which I've highlighted subsection seven, an owner's corporation is so far as practicable and subject to any adjustment to implement each plan. This is not a mandatory requirement to do what the plan says, to raise levies in accordance with the plan. This is to uh, implement the plan so far as practicable. Uh, my recollection is that this came in, someone will tell me if I'm wrong, that this came in with our 2015 uh, legislation, this requirement to so far as practicable implement the plan. Many, many owners that I work with are very frustrated by this requirement because they say to me, Amanda, we've got to have a plan. We spend money on the plan, but the levies don't get raised in accordance with the plan. So we still don't have the money to do our uh, capital works and repair and maintain our common property as we should be. Um, why isn't there a legal requirement in New South Wales to raise levies in accordance with the capital works fund plan? It would just be so much simpler to be able to hold our owners to account, our owners corporation, our strata committee to um, ensure they are recommending in accordance with the legislation that levies be raised in accordance with the plan. So we're now seeing exactly that same recommendation being made by our US counterparts after they have experienced an unspeakable tragedy. Uh, and I would hope that we can take some uh, guidance from that, some learnings from that to hopefully make sure that we do not end up in the same position of having to experience that tragedy before we demand changes to our laws. Uh, so going back to the CAI's policy position, which I have here on the screen, uh, they're calling for these plans to be mandated by law uh, and for funding, mandating reserve funding, that's your capital works funding for community associations, mandating disclosure of that funding, including to new buyers. Um, and really, really importantly here, I think there is a recommendation to require these studies, these plans to be conducted by a specialist, a professional or other qualified professional like an engineer or an architect. Same issue, same issue that we have here. The Capital Works Fund plans do not necessarily need to be prepared by anybody who's got any particular expertise. Um, we see a lot of ticker box plans, a lot of template plans that are inexpensive, which some communities might think is great, uh, but not necessarily helpful to the community, accurate and assisting that community to raise funds um, that are actually necessary in order to meet their repair and maintenance obligations. So here we see the Community Associations Institute calling for legislation that requires these plans to be prepared by specialists. Uh, and not having state laws that allow owners to waive or to opt out of their funding requirements. Um, another really, really important aspect to make sure that if we're going to have this legislation, that you can't simply opt out and say, I'm not going to comply with it. So that is the CAI's policy position on what they call reserve studies and funding, very similar to our Capital Works Fund planning and our Capital Works Fund levies. Uh, another position that has been stated in this paper is that relating to building maintenance and structural integrity. Uh, that starts on page 26 of the report. And you'll see here in the policy position, the CAI does talk about putting some obligations on developers to put together complete sets of final approved architectural and engineering design drawings so that new communities, newly established communities, new owners understand what exactly is in their building and can properly 
plan for its repair and maintenance. Um, this is precisely what we are seeing our building commissioner in New South Wales, David Chandler, uh, assist us with, with new legislation that has commenced this year. Uh, I do know that the CAI was consulting, uh, they say in this report that they were consulting with uh, global stakeholders and global uh, professionals on these particular recommendations. And I do uh, hope that there was some consultation with Australian representatives and understanding the good work that we are doing here when it comes to new buildings and holding developers to account. Uh, but also these recommendations go on to refer to buildings that are older, buildings that are more than 10 years old. I'll just keep scrolling down here. Uh, recommendations here for new constructions and then recommendations for existing buildings more than 10 years old. Uh, there's a first inspection that should take place and then a periodic inspection which shall not exceed every 10 years during the first 20 years after construction and then five years, inspections every five years in our older buildings. Really, really fascinating to me. Uh, I'm often asked, Amanda, what's the bulk of the work that you do as a strata lawyer? And I say it is lot owners coming to me saying, Amanda, my owner's corporation is not properly repairing and maintaining the common property. And we have this legal obligation right across our legislation, across the, across our country, an obligation to repair and maintain common property. It's there. It is a legal requirement. There's lots of cases about it. It's strict. It's absolute. But when it comes down to it, it is ultimately left to an owner's corporation to decide how it maintains, when it maintains, when it conducts its repair. And if it doesn't meet that obligation, it's up to an owner to take them to task, to take them to the tribunal, to file an application, to take that incredibly expensive, if you're going to engage a lawyer, time consuming, uh, often frustrating approach of holding your owner's corporation to account and enforcing yourself that law, seeking a tribunal order. Uh, having a legislative requirement, which is what the US Community Associations Institute is calling for, to have periodic inspections and have a specialist look at structural integrity of a building and the quality of the building maintenance, I think is fantastic. I think therein lies the solution to this problem. Periodic inspections uh, every 10 years for the first 20 years since construction and then five years thereafter, I think is an excellent idea. Uh, the purpose of re-inspections is to monitor progressive deterioration based on a comparison and to identify issues of immediate concern, as well as to establish a recommendation for the next inspection, which shall not exceed 10 years or the five years if you are in an older building. Uh, if there's any concern about safety or stability, an inspection should be conducted immediately, of course, not having to stick to those timeframes. So these are the recommendations for new legislation in the US after the partial collapse of the Miami apartment building. Uh, there is also a section here about, uh, I believe, communications with residents and making sure that residents, here it is on page 28, uh, communication requirements to residents. Another complaint that I hear so often. All reports to be saved is the recommendation for reference to be used to monitor progressive conditions. Provide residents with a summary report of the condition of the building and a plan to address pending corrective maintenance issues and funding. How are we going to fund it within 120 days after the building inspection? So quite prescriptive um, suggestions there. Provide notice that there's a report available for review and resale disclosure statements to include any anticipated special assessments. That's uh, levies and the summary of the building condition report. So I think these are all uh, very, very sensible suggestions. They arise from months of consultation and research in the US. I think there is so much for us to be learning from that report. Uh, and I have some comments here, which I will just come back to and share. Uh, Colin is saying, go figure, the minimum should be structural safe, fire safe. Think about fire because this is the next big thing in New South Wales, not structure in legislation. Yep. I'm with you there, Colin. Uh, Nez is asking, 
don't strata managers generally have building reports on hand? Well, Ness, they should. If those building reports exist, number one, uh, because uh, aside from having that legislative duty, that statutory duty, we lawyers call it, to repair and maintain the common property, there is not an express obligation, at least not in our New South Wales legislation, to have reports, building reports, uh, structural engineers' reports, um, or inspections to be carried out. So what's being suggested in the US, which I think is great, is to have these regular inspections and reports mandated every 10 or five years. Uh, and as for having the reports on hand, um, often our owners' corporations do not keep the best books and records. Reports may have been prepared but may have been lost somewhere along the way, whether that's a transition from one strata manager to another uh, or files simply disappearing. Unfortunately, record keeping is another big problem within um, our space, that's for sure. Uh, Andrew Kingdon is saying, agree with you, Amanda. Thank you very much, Andrew. Good to have your support. Uh, and Pamela is here saying she was running late. Good to see you, Pamela. No worries at all. No need to apologize. So that is the uh, flying summary of the Community Associations Institute Condominium Safety Public Policy Report, the CAI, being very similar to our SCA here in Australia. Uh, and I would like, if you're a uh, strata manager, if you are uh, simply an engaged owner, um, to have a good look at the report and start forming some ideas around how these kinds of processes, policies may be implemented in your own building or in buildings that you serve to uh, make sure that you are aware of the risk of this kind of tragedy happening in our country. It is absolutely a possibility in some buildings more so than others and how you can protect your owners in your building and your clients if you're a strata manager from that kind of tragedy. Um, and definitely I believe this is the kind of research and reports that should be brought to the attention of our legislators. Uh, Henry is saying there is also a need to ensure that all renovations and refurbishments are done correctly. The Miami collapse was linked to pool deck modifications as well as resident renovations that added weight to and compromised the integrity of the structure. Mm, yeah, that's really concerning, Henry, because we sure know that there are lots of things that go on in our building, renovations in our buildings, renovations that are carried out by owners that are not properly notified to or approved by the owners corporation. And if you don't, you can't fix what you don't know about um, until it's too late sometimes, until there's a problem. So I do think once again, there is the solution uh, in these recommendations that we're seeing from the US that we have mandatory regular inspections and reports. What a great way to find out whether somebody in lot five has, re has removed a structural or a load bearing wall and we didn't know about that. Or someone in lot 25 has added a jacuzzi to their balcony, which is adding da dangerous uh, weight to that part of the building. If we have regular mandatory inspections required by law of all of those spaces, then we're going to have a better chance, I think, of being on notice about those issues and having the opportunity to rectify them before they end in disaster. Chris is asking, is the CAI report available publicly for review? It absolutely is. I'm seeing, Chris, that you are on LinkedIn. So Rochelle or myself will hop over there after our chat here today and post the link to the report in on LinkedIn for you so you can come back around to it, um, but definitely publicly available. Uh, I may reach out to uh, CAI. Uh, it's, it is confusing, Chris. I call them CAI. CIA as well, CAI, uh, and see if Dawn Bowman, who I believe is the current president, um, will be able to have a chat with us on the podcast. That would be great, wouldn't it? And dig a little bit deeper on these issues. Okie dokie. So that is the report that I wanted to make sure you were well aware of. Uh, maybe this is something that should be on the agenda for our new property services commissioner. We have in New South Wales a property services commissioner now. His name is John Minns. Now, our New South Wales government has appointed John Minns as our state's first property services commissioner. 
In the government's press release, and I was reading just this week, the appointment is said to herald a new era of trust and engagement between the real estate industry, its regulator and consumers in New South Wales. That's what we call many of you who live in and own Strata Apartments, your consumers. Commissioner Inns is going to commence his appointment on the 6th of December 2021. Now, the Property Services Commissioner, we are told, will sit independently of fair trading, fair trading being the regulator for this real estate, big, big area that is real estate in New South Wales. And the Commissioner will report directly to the Secretary of the Department of Customer Service and the Minister for Better Regulation. Now, who is John Nins? Where's he come from? What is what is his uh, particular expertise to be our Property Services Commissioner? We are told that Commissioner Minns has 25 years experience as a real estate business owner and an agent. Most recently, he was the managing director of a Canberra-based independent or oh, the, the business is called the Independent Property Group, and he was the managing director there. They're based in Canberra, and he is a previous director of Academy of Real Estate Services, where he worked to improve professional development and training opportunities. Now, the commissioner will join the Property Services Expert Panel to work in collaboration with the property industry. The chair of the Property Services Expert Panel is our very own Chris Duggan, Strata Community Association President. And I know that Chris has been quoted as saying that he is personally delighted with the appointment of Commissioner Minns. Mr Minns himself says that he's excited about this two-year position that's starting in early December and he has outlined some of the key elements that he sees as part of his role. He's going to be focused on bridging the gap between government and the property industry. He sees the digitalisation of the industry, housing affordability, education, training and licensing as some of the key topics to be worked on. He hasn't listed Strata in that short list yet. Uh, he says that the goal is to build a strong collaborative and innovative framework for property in New South Wales and make sure that consumers, that's you, Strata owners, are getting good outcomes as a result of engaging with the industry. So while in the press releases and in the media that I've seen so far, he hasn't specifically mentioned um, what he is going to get started on in terms of our strata sector, he does say that he's going to spend a lot of time listening to what is indeed a very diverse group of stakeholders over the next period. So I do hope that on his agenda is consultation with us, Strata stakeholders, most importantly, owners, you, me, Strata owners, and assessing our experience with, in particular, our regulator, Fair Trading, and seeing how that experience perhaps uh, may have some room for improvement. And I am hopeful that the chair of the Property Services Expert Panel, uh, being the leader of our Strata Community Association in Australia, Chris Duggan, is able to make sure that these Strata issues are front and centre for our new Commissioner Minns. All right, a few more comments coming on in. Thank you, Rochelle, for posting the link there for Christopher on LinkedIn to our CAI report. Uh, Henry is just adding here in New Zealand, there is a certificate of fitness for buildings. This needs to be introduced into Australia. There also needs to be a provision for councils to suspend or cancel the occupancy certificate if significant defects are found. Yes, indeed. Well, we do have, uh, Henry, I think you're in Victoria. We do have our building commissioner, David Chandler, um, exercising some leg legislative powers here in New South Wales towards that end. Um, hopefully, you guys are next. I'm not sure what's happening. I know you mentioned New Zealand. I um, don't know what your background is there, being across what's happening in New Zealand. We'll have to get you connected with Colin, Colin Campbell there in New Zealand. Uh, what's happening in Victoria when it comes to these um, 
uh, original building defects and how we can do a little better with that legislation. So um, we'll have to have a chat to some of my Victorian counterparts to be across that one. All righty. Um, I'm being told that my background is going dark here. It's just mood, the mood lighting that's happening. The clouds are coming over. We're getting to some very serious strata talk here. The sun is gone. Um, I'm not sure why I might be going dark here. I'll just keep leaning closer to the light. Bring me into the light. Uh, now, speaking of light, I am going to let you know about our women in strata. Christmas party, end of year party, 2021. I gave you a little heads up at the beginning of this chat that by the time I got around to sharing the registration link with you, we might be sold out. Uh, we do have restrictions on numbers for this event, which is happening on Thursday, the 9th of December in Sydney. If you can get to Sydney, if you're not in Sydney, I'm sorry, but if you can get to Sydney, we would love to see you. Uh, it's happening at the winery in Surrey Hills. We kick off from 6 p.m. on Thursday, the 9th of December. Women in Strata is a group that I started about six years ago now. I think it was 2015, before the podcast, even before the podcast, uh, getting together with uh, those who are serving the strata sector, strata managers, lawyers, engineers, architects, uh, suppliers to the strata sector, uh, our accountants out there doing the numbers. We've put together a, a steering committee way back then, which has evolved our group considerably in the last six years. And pre-COVID, we had some pretty fab events getting together with those who work hard, play hard in the strata space. And our last end of year party was in 2019 at this same venue. We sold out then as well. And I still remember what a fabulous night it was. So if you are a woman working in strata management, if you are a man working in strata management, I often get asked, Amanda, does this mean men are not allowed? Absolutely. We love men. We love having men come to our events, our men in strata. It's important that they're involved in the important conversations that we have uh, and understand the unique position that women are in serving this sector. Uh, our women in strata end of year party. I think Rochelle's going to pop the link to register via Eventbrite into the notes here. If you hit that page and you are told it is sold out, um, that probably means it is sold out. But do take up the option to join the wait list because uh, inevitably people's plans change. We do run a wait list and we will get in touch if a position opens up in uh, at the Women in Strata end of year party. So jump on that wait list if that is the only option there for you. We particularly love to see our strata managers at these events. You are so hardworking. You're often going to meetings after hours. Uh, women in particular, for some reason, I know the reasons, the whole host of reasons, do not take the time. Don't feel they can take the time to, to socialize, to reward themselves, to catch up with colleagues, to network, to get out there and meet people. I want to meet you. If I haven't met you in person, I would love to meet you. And this is the great event to do it at. Uh, please do make the time to join us at our Women in Strata end of year party. Uh, Nez is saying united in strata. Yes, I think that's my, was that my men and women comment? We are all united in strata. Indeed. Uh, a few more comments coming through here about our building commissioner. I'm just going to circle back there. Uh, Jasmine is saying, how will the commissioner tie in with the strata law review currently underway and due at the end of 2021? Very good question, Jasmine. I hope the commissioner will be involved in some form in that review. Uh, we, I'm assuming you're referring to the review in New South Wales. We do have, um, you've reminded me that we were to expect a discussion paper, position paper, I keep forgetting what they're called, uh, on our New South Wales legislation. I'm not sure that's come out yet. We've all made submissions on what we think needs to be changed. Um, and there was a paper being released. Uh, that might be, Jasmine, what you're referring to for the end of 2021. I'll keep my eye out for that. It would be great to have the input of the Property Services Commissioner on that particular issue. Uh, Pamela, I'm just going through, you're asking me a detailed question there. I'm going to come back around to that one, if you don't mind. Uh, Henry is saying, actually, it's a building warrant of fitness, a BWOF in New Zealand. 
I like it, Henry. I like it. Uh, I'm not enough across our new legislation here in New South Wales um, that enables our building commissioner to stop the issue of an occupation certificate if he is not happy with the way a new building is being constructed. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a name for that, but I like the WAF. The WAF is a good one. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, the link to our Women in Strata Christmas Party, Rochelle, has popped into our comments here on Facebook. Uh, and Jasmine is saying, spot on, New South Wales Review. Sometimes I am. Sometimes I am, Jasmine. Thank you for confirming that for me. Well, I have had a really lovely free-ranging chat with you all here today. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your questions. Sometimes it's tricky on a live to be here on my lonesome without a guest and to feel like I'm talking at you, but I certainly don't feel like that today. We have covered uh, the podcast episode from this week, How to Invest Owners Corporation Funds, my chat with Tim Fuller at Strata Guardian and some good additional questions coming through that I'm going to invite Tim here to join us on a live and work through those here with us, whether he wants to or not. He's, he's coming along. We have shared the Community Associations Institute condominium safety, condominium safety public policy report. That's a mouthful. And I looked at lessons for Australia coming out of that report, some really, really important lessons and some great ideas for how we might do better when it comes to the repair and maintenance of our common property and the obligation to do that to ensure everybody's safety. I have spoken about our new property services commissioner in New South Wales, Commissioner John Minns, and put the call out to make sure he has uh, strata on his agenda uh, and we've shared the invitation to our Women in Strata end of year event specifically for our, uh, particularly I should say, for our strata managers, both men and women serving our strata communities. We would love to see you all there. Uh, thank you very much. More comments coming on through. I will, co I will come on back here uh, as I like to do sometimes on a Friday night, on a rainy, cloudy, dark Friday night uh, and uh, do my best to answer anything that I haven't got to here today. But otherwise, enjoy your weekend, everybody. I will catch you at a Friday Live coming to you sometime soon. See you later. <laughs>